Hello, and welcome to the Bermuda Day 2021 Mini Float Challenge. I'm Miss Karina, and I'm here at Kaleidoscope Arts Foundation. Today, I want to help you build a basic structure, or the armature, the framework, the skeleton of your design that's going to go on the palette. Coming up with a concept early will help you to determine the materials, the strength needed, and the structure itself as you go forward. It'll also help you with collecting your materials. You have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Is this float going to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background? Are you only going to see it from two sides? Is it telling a story? Are there many objects in the scene? Or is it just one big structure? All of these questions will help you to determine where and what you are going to build and what materials that you're going to use. Drawing out your design will help you to determine how it's going to look. So here I've drawn a simple house design, a Bermuda house, and it's taking up the entire palette. This will help you collect your different materials needed, plan how it's going to be placed on your palette, and to also determine the height of it and what supports and structures are going to be needed in place to build it. Here, this particular design needs a palette, some boxes, tape, sticks, string, scissors, cardboard, hot glue gun, staple gun, and some paint. So let's talk about structures. When we're starting, we need to start with the basic framework, the skeleton. So in this case, I want to talk about geometric shapes, simple ones that we could start from and build upon. One of the shapes that we could talk about is the cube. For that, we could use an everyday bound box. This box could be a house, it could be a building, it could be a city scene, and all we need to determine when using this box is, is it going to be holding any weight? If it is going to be holding any kind of weight, it's going to need some internal supports. You can put wood inside of it, you can stuff it, you can put plastic in it, or styrofoam, just to give it a little bit more weight. If it's just for decorative purposes, you don't have to worry about that. In this particular case, and when we're talking about the design that we were just talking about, I'm gonna be using bigger boxes because I wanna fill my whole palette with a house. Here we have a big box. And I'm gonna collect a few together to create a shape. Again, if I needed to hold some weight, I'm going to have to put some framework inside of the house. But for now, we are just going to create this building. So with a little magic and paint, we can create this into a house. So once we've built our house, we're also going to now need a roof structure. So one of the simplest ones would be a pyramid shape. So we could create that by making a tent structure. So here I've made one using some garden bamboo sticks, a piece of cardboard, which is kind of important because it'll help you space the sticks according to the size of the box. It'll also keep it all equally sided. The elastic bands were a huge advantage when putting this together. It was a bit of a challenge to keep the sticks together, so that was why I used elastic band and then tape to create the shape. Once you have it, this one could take a lot of weight. You need to think about that. If your roof is going to need to hold some weight, you're gonna want either wood or wire in place so that it can support the weight. Otherwise, it could be made out of just cardboard or newspaper. So let's pop it on our house. In order to keep it in place, you could create cardboard tabs. that you could put into place with tape to keep it from moving around. Now, what does this tent-like structure now need? It needs to have a covering in order to make it a roof. 
So in this case, I've taken cardboard and I've cut it into a triangle shape that's gonna fit on top of this pyramid. I then stepped different layers of cardboard to create our architectural stepped Bermuda roof. We could then place this onto the tent leg structure and you've got a lovely strong Bermuda roof. So we've talked about our geometric shapes, but what about if you want to build something that is very organic, like a hillside or a coral reef? That's when you can use other supplies to build the skeleton up or framework of the scene. In this case, I'm going to be building a coral reef. I could use plastic bags that have been filled with fabric or brown paper bags. A brown paper bag filled with newspaper, or even trash, plastic bottles. And we can create these shapes that would give us, let's say, a brain pool. Now, you need to consider when you're doing this, whether this is, again, gonna be holding any kind of weight. If it is, then it will need infrastructure inside. It will need to either have uh, chicken wire or cardboard or rolled up newspaper to give it a bit more strength. Let's say we wanted to make this very geometric box into a coral reef. You could take it and you could actually manipulate it either by hand or with a hammer and you could just smash in the corners, creating the shape that you require for your scene. Another way to create height could be using a pool noodle or cardboard or rolled up newspaper. And if you want it to move or to bear some weight, you could actually use wire inside and it could be manipulated into shapes that you would like. Another thing that we could build, let's say we wanted to build um, some smaller animals for the scene. Let's say a duck. We could use newspaper again plastic bag and we could take that plastic bag and we could stuff it with newspaper or brown paper or tissue paper and we could scrunch up brown paper bags or even plastic bags in this case I'm using newspaper and you can use tape and hot glue to, to manipulate it into the shapes that you're looking for in this case, I want to make a duck's neck, so I'm going to use tape. You could use duct tape. You could use paper tape, packing tape. It doesn't really matter what tape. You're not going to want at this point to be using any sort of wet glues because you want it to adhere immediately. So hot glue could be used, but I would probably say tape. And let's give our duck a little beak so we could use a toilet roll and we could put it onto the front. And here we have a lovely duck shape, which we could then paper mache over or cover with spray paint and detail. Now let's talk about a bit more of a challenging organic shape. In this case, we've decided we're going to design a sea turtle that's gonna take up the entire palette. And how would you go about that? So we want to make sure that our design is going to fit on the palette because you do not want your design to go over the sides of the palette. That is one of the rules. So we would draw it. In this case, we've drawn it almost like a dress pattern. So we've just drawn a very flat turtle and we've simplified his shapes of his flipper and his shells. We could then take those drawings and we could cut them into templates that we could trace onto cardboard. So in this case, here's the lower flipper and the top flipper. We could then take those shapes and give them three-dimensional quality by bunching up newsprint, sticking it down, hot gluing it, and then covering it either with plastic or paper mache. But what about the shell? The shell is going to need structure, especially if it's going to have any weight on it. So the bottom of this particular turtle, we've used cardboard and we're just using some packing styrofoam 
to give it some height, but also to give it a little bit of strength as well. This is the bottom of the shell. I'm just popping it in there. Now the shell top. We want to consider the different shapes that it has in it. So we're going to get a piece of cardboard. And as you can see here, we're going to map out the different shell shapes. So again, it's flat. It's cardboard. And we're doing the same process that we did with the flippers. We're going to scrunch newspaper, wet newspaper down with glue. We're going to either cover it in plastics or we're going to cover it in paper. And we'll end up with a shape that looks something like this. And you can see that each piece has been templated onto cardboard and then we've had the layer of the newspaper placed on top of that and then the paper mache on top of that and you get this gorgeous turtle shell so we could do that and create an entire turtle including a head so here we have a piece of styrofoam and we have used a plastic bag and we put a whole bunch of stuffing with newsprint in it we then taped around it to give it some shape and we were able to press in where we needed to. We used paper towel roll for the eyes and then we did a coating of paper mache on top. And you can see here I've actually base coated this side of just some house paint that we had around the house. And that is a very challenging shape that you can break down into very simple steps and able to build something magnificent. So let's talk about paper mache. Let's talk about adhesives. So in this case, we have the turtle head that we created earlier and we want to paper mache it. There's two different methods that we can use. One is taking everyday Elmer's glue and adding it to a little bit of water and then mixing it up so that it's the consistency, I would say, of milk. So we have that kind of milky consistency. The other method that we can use is just using equal parts flour and water. So here we have a half a cup of flour and we're going to add a half a cup of water and in this case I'm just using a fork to mix it you could use a whisk you might want to use a whisk if you have one because it may break up all the little bits that are in there you don't want to have any dry bits of flour you want it all to be very sticky now the flour mixture is going to be stickier than the glue mixture, but they both work the same. So here we have the glue and water mixture. Here we have the flour. And they're both applied the same way. So I'm gonna show you, we, you're going to get uh, paper, printer paper, newspaper, brown paper. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it isn't necessarily magazine. Magazine has a varnish gloss to it, so it's difficult to manipulate. You're going to want stuff that just has print, not any kind of gloss. And you're gonna want strips that are about this big. You don't want them too big, otherwise they'll get in lumps. You're gonna dip it in your mixture. This one is the glue mixture. And then I just squeegee it with my fingers so that it's not too wet. And then apply it to the surface of your preacher, in this case. And then I use my fingers to press it all down. I don't want any holes or edges coming up. So we'll just go through this process again. We take the paper, we squeegee it, place it on the surface, and press down gently. Obviously this is messy, but have fun with it. Um, I'm now going to show you what it's like to do it with the flour and water. Again, we've got some ripped paper. Try to pre-rip your paper. Otherwise, you're going to end up with sticky fingers trying to rip paper. So try and have a supply ready to go. So we're going to dip that in. And again, same process. We're going to squeegee it off. And we're going to place that on there. And 
and press it into place. Again, I have so much on my fingers excess, I could probably just squeegee it right off of my fingers here. And that's how you make paper mache. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or send us a direct message. We'll be putting out other videos and other tutorials on upcycled art and natural materials. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Department of Culture for sponsoring this series. Try to have fun and get creative as you create your mini float.